Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia you need to know about casinos and casino games. And if you're anything like me, you love variations of the game of poker. And even if you've played poker all your life, and you've walked through tables in every casino and every continent, you're going to find variations of poker that you may have never heard of. One that you should be familiar with, though, is Caribbean Stud Poker. Now, Despite the fancy name, Caribbean Stud Poker is more or less the same as any good old fashioned five card stud game. You know, like that you used to play with your grandparents. Now, if you've played five card stud, you have all the game knowledge you need in order to play Caribbean Stud right away. Although there are a few key differences to take note of before you sit down. Now, let's first and foremost, the most important thing about Caribbean poker is that there is no bluffing. There's no lying. There, your, your, your hand and everything is very in the, it's like almost like blackjack. Every card is out there for everyone to see. Now, no draws are made. It's stud poker. There are rare Caribbean variations. There are uh, poker, Caribbean poker variations that do allow for a draw or two but they're not the norm. We're talking about traditional, like the way God intended it, Caribbean stud poker. Now, the next thing that's important is you're not playing against all the players. You're only playing against the house. The other players are out of the hands. They are playing their own little games against the dealer. So that's pretty much all you need to know to have a basic understanding of how to play stud poker. So let's get down to the rules of how you play. So the actual rules of Caribbean stud poker are really simple. The dealer at the table will deal out five cards to any single player that has actually put a bet on the table. This is known as the ante. So I'm gonna have three players uh, up against the dealer. So I deal five cards to each player. And then I deal five cards to the dealer himself. He flips the last card revealing a nine. So then once uh, the last card is flipped, then the players can reveal their own hands and take a look. So this player right here has uh, almost a, a flush, but unfortunately that not a good, not a very good enough hand. It's only a king queen. So they have a very tough decision. They either have to double their bet to stay in the game or they have to fold the hand. Now with king queen, uh, it's really up to you, but I'm not really feeling this hands very good, but who knows? Let's, what's, no, you know what? This player's gonna be smart enough to fold their hand, so they're not gonna play that hand. They're gonna fold it. Next, this hand right here. This player is showing a pair of eights. That's pretty good. So they're gonna go ahead and double their bet, all right? Now, uh, just essentially to stay in the game. Now, this third player here is gonna reveal, oh, wow, they, they almost had a straight, uh, but unfortunately almost doesn't count, so they're gonna think that this is not a very good hand per se, uh, but they might still win. They feel a little bit more bold. All right, now we flip these over. The dealer reveals that in fact they had a pair of fives. Pair of fives beats this player right here, um, and this player it loses to, so this player gets uh, paid out accordingly. Now, this is the interesting thing about this game. Uh, in order for the dealer to qualify their hand, the dealer has to have at least a king and an ace. Um, if they don't qualify, then the players only get paid on their initial ante. So you, this player won this hand, they definitely get paid that one that they, uh, that they bet, but they also bet the extra. So they get paid the one for winning the hand and they also get the one for the bonus bet uh, because they, this particular dealer qualified. Had I not had at least a pair of fives, if I had instead like a seven, for example, then I just would have had a king, which isn't enough to qualify, so this would have been a push, and the money would have been returned to the players. Um, but it's also important that this second bet is paid on a sliding scale, and that sliding scale is dependent on how strong your hand is. You see typically a pair usually pays out uh, a side bet wager of uh, one to one, while bigger hands, like the Royal Flush, could be 500 to one. So that's where the Caribbean uh, poker actually gets its volatility. So you're really hoping to have five cards drawn to you at random and have that big massive hand because if you do and the dealer happens to qualify in that particular hand, you are gonna see a nice payout, all right? So in those rare cases where you're dealt five cards and you have a full house, you're looking at some crazy payouts. So let's take a look at those payouts. Okay, so typically these payouts can be like 100 to one on royal flushes or like 50 to one straight flush, 
20 to one on four of a kind, seven to one on full house. Uh, flushes pay five to one, straights typically pay four, three of a kind pays three to one, uh, two pair play two to one, and a pair like this is just one to one. So in this particular case, this guy turned his $2 investment into $4 with a pair of eights. What's important to remember about this payout table is it will vary slightly depending on which individual Caribbean stud poker table and what casino, live or online, you happen to be play at. So be sure to check out the table payouts before placing any additional bets so that you understand what the potential prize or bet payouts are. If the dealer's hand is higher than your hand, you will lose both the ante and your additional bet. So remember, uh, each player is only playing against the dealer, not the other player. So even if your five card hand is higher than another player's, you will still lose your bets if the dealer's hand is higher than yours. The only, thing, only person you really need to be concerning about is you versus the dealer. If your hand and the dealer's are exactly the same, all bets are a push and return to the player. Um, you will find that the dealer's hands will qualify and be opened roughly about 56% of the time. So if you have a question about should you even bother um, thinking about this bonus uh, wager, typically hands do open about 56% of the time, all right? Now, when it comes to Caribbean stud, there's typically betting limits. At any casino, um, every single casino will have a particular limit. The smallest ante bet you'll find at typical casinos for Caribbean stud poker is around $5. But there is a chance you might stumble across a $3 table every now and, then, now and again anyway. While online though, the, there is a variety of Caribbean stud poker options that you can benefit from. So you'll find for example, much lower limits, uh, with the ante even dropped as low as 250 in some cases I've seen. Caribbean stud progressive bets is really interesting because this is where uh, usually your, uh, your wager will have a set fixed payout if you happen to have one of these uh, upper level hands, like for example, a, a full house or four of a kind, like I explained earlier. But with progressive bet payouts, the pot, the progressive jackpot just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So each bet made uh, at this particular table will supplement that, uh, that potential progressive jackpot that will get paid out. So if your, your five card hand happens to be a royal flush, a straight flush or four of a kind or a full house or even a flush, you have a chance at a piece of this really big progressive jackpot, just like any slot machine. So essentially you will win the bet regardless of whether you beat the dealer's hand or not. Um, but you will also be paid out according to this sliding scale with the hundred, with the Royal Flush claiming, of course, 100% of the progressive jackpot and a flush, for example, paying out a much smaller percentage, usually about 10%. So these progressive jackpots are something you definitely be needing to look out for when looking for Caribbean poker online. Um, it'll be different at every single table and every single casino, so it's really important you educate yourself before you make any sort of cash wagers. Um, and it's you know a good indication to find out when it was last been paid out and how much has been contributed since uh, starting. The current amount of the progressive jackpot should be clearly displayed at each Caribbean stud poker table, so be on the lookout for that. If you don't see it, then that usually means that the table doesn't have a progressive uh, jackpot. So I hope you enjoyed this real basic introduction to the game of Caribbean stud poker. This is a variation on the, po on the game of poker, and there's so many out there. Please guys, share your favorite with us as a comment down below. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, clickety-clack that like button and punch that subscribe button while you ringy-ding-ding that notification bell because it's the only way you're gonna hear about it every single time we upload one of these great videos to our channel. And guys, help us grow the channel. Remember that sharing is caring and go ahead and share this with all your friends up there on social media. Share, share, share. Get this out there. My name's Dominic. This is the All-America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly.